Hello my friends, I'm the itty bitty Celtic witch and today we are here to have a chat all about witchy circles. So you might have heard the term of casting a circle before and this is something that's usually paired with spellcrafting or ritual. So today we're going to be diving a bit further into what circle casting is and three different ways that you can approach it. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So what is circle casting? So casting a circle is essentially creating a literal circle or creating an energy circle in a circle shape. It's It sounds a lot like what it is and it is a lot like what it sounds. And the purpose of casting a circle, which is what we're really getting at here, is to create a protective magical space. So often circle casting is intertwined with protective magic. So if you are casting a circle around you for a ritual or for a spell, then what you are doing is mindfully clearing out the energy of the space that you are working in and allowing that external energy that might be coming in to sort of stay where it is. It's kind of like creating protective energetic magical boundaries around you. Now this can be really helpful whether you are spellcrafting, whether you are going into a ritual space, or whether you are just looking to center your energy or weave a protective magic spell. And that's because by creating that circle, you're creating that boundary. So if there's any sort of negative energy, for instance, floating out and about, you are keeping that out of your spellcrafting space, out of your ritual space. Now, casting a circle doesn't necessarily have to mean casting a circle just around you. It could be protective magic around a living space, around something that you are looking to nurture and protect. For instance, if you have some garden magic going on and you really want to make sure that those herbs are having their energy, that they're not picking up any outside energy that you feel could sort of impact their spellcrafting ability. In that instance, it might be helpful to create a circle around them, or as I mentioned, around a living space, around something that's really important to you. So essentially, circle casting is very tied with protective magic, and it's used to separate your energy or the energy of the spell or the energy that you are protecting from any negative energy around it that might be directed at it, or it might just pick up on it. Now, is casting a circle circle essential. It is definitely not an essential part of spellcrafting, of ritual space, of magic in general. It is, however, something that is really popular and it is very common because it is so useful. So while we talked a bit about circle casting in the context of stepping into a ritual space or a spellcrafting space or using that circle itself as a spell, you could also view circle casting as simply part of your witchy routine. So if it's something that helps you settle, ground, clear energy, let go of things that you have been sort of thinking about throughout the day and distractions, then having a circle casting as part of that ritual, as a step in it, can be something that is very centering. It gets you in the mindset, you're feeling calm, you're feeling connected with spirit and with that space. So circle casting doesn't always have to have that protective magical mindset. It can be a very key step in your witchy routine if it's something that calls to you. But as I mentioned, it is not essential. So if you don't cast that circle, but you're feeling really grounded, you're feeling really focused on the intent in that spell, in that ritual, in the energy and the magic that you're weaving, then that is perfectly okay. You might find that you cast circles some of the time and not other times, or maybe not at all, or maybe always, or maybe a bit of both. In my magical practice, it's really a bit of both. It depends on the spell, on the ritual I'm doing, 
on the minds that I'm in in the moment, the energy that's surrounding me in my environment. It can be something that's very centering and grounding and I really do appreciate that as, as a witch. It is something that I definitely use as a tool for protective magic and for centering as part of a witchy routine before settling into a ritual or grounding or spell crafting space. So essentially circle casting can be a really great tool, a really great step in your witchy routine, in your witchy process, but it's not an essential. So if spirit isn't calling you to cast a circle in a particular instance, what's really important is that you're listening to spirit, that you're listening to your intuition, and you're letting that guide you. Because one of the biggest parts of this path in general, and I mention this in a lot of my videos, is trusting in intuition, trusting in spirit. So let that be your guide, whether you are casting a spell, whether you are in ritual space, or whether you are settling into a witchy routine. And allow for flexibility too, if sometimes it doesn't feel quite right to cast a circle, or other times it feels like the perfect fit. So you're thinking of casting a circle. Now let's chat about three ways that you can approach this. Now these aren't limited in the only ways that you can approach circle casting. These are just the three that come to mind and the three that I use most commonly in my practice. The first way to cast a circle is creating a very literal visual circle that you can see with your eyes. And this can be done with crystals or with herbs. Or if you are outdoors, creating an actual marking of that circle on the earth and in the soil with a branch or a wand that you might have on hand. A lot of my rituals and spells are done indoors. And so rather than painting a circle on the floor, I find it much more beneficial and an easier cleanup process to use crystals and herbs. Now working with crystals and herbs has the added benefit of incorporating the magical correspondences and the magical properties of those tools, of those supplies, into the circle itself. So for instance, you could create a circle with sodalite. This is a crystal that is connected with air energy. So bringing in an awareness of the air that's surrounding that circle and supporting your circle with that air elemental energy. Sodalite is also a stone about communication. So this could lend a circle space, a strong mindfulness, a strong magic around welcoming in open communication communication. So letting in those good energies that will support your ritual space because one thing to keep in mind when you are crafting a circle is it doesn't have to like block everything out. You still want the good energy to flow. You still want to connect with different messages from spirit and different supportive energies. So working with something like sodalite can be really helpful because it lends that communication energy to the circle that you are creating. Now, if you're looking for something that's more protective in a more literal sense, then for crystals, I would go with something like hematite or black tourmaline. Those are my personal go-tos for protective magic crystals. And simply place these in a clockwise direction around you. And then to wrap the circle up when you're all done, you can remove them in a counterclockwise direction. Now, this is a tip because it works really well for me in my practice. I'm very familiar with the idea of the clockwise direction being building up just as the time moves throughout the day. And then counterclockwise being sort of a wrapping up energy in a way to release the spell or the circle or the ritual space. So you can go right ahead and place those crystals around you in a clockwise direction, or you can use different herbs. Now, if you're looking for protective magic, an actually very convenient herb or spice that is in most of our cupboards and pantries is peppercorns. Peppercorns have a lot of protective energy to them. So if that is the purpose of the circle you are casting, then popping into the spice cupboard and using that as a way to visually create a circle can be a really wonderful way to approach it. Now the second way to cast a circle is to create that circular shape 
with your hand or with a wand. Now the wands that I create are very nature based so you could absolutely use something like a branch or a twig that you've picked up along a witchy nature walk. That is a perfect one in itself and if you'd actually like to learn more about my wand making process then I will pop a video up above in one of these corners so you can check out how I made a wand. So then we are back to circle casting and you are using your wand or your hand to visually draw that shape. Now if you're inside you're not going to leave an imprint on your floor. You're just making that circle shape with your with your being, with your earthly energy. If you're outside then maybe casting that circle creating a literal shape in the soil. If you want to have that circular shape around you and that feeling that tactile sort of tangible feeling of creating a circle space but you don't want to incorporate any witchy supplies and you just want to sort of work with your energy then using your hand or a wand as a witchy tool is a perfect way to approach it. Then for our third way to cast a circle this is without any supplies whatsoever and this is without drawing the shape with a wand or with your hand. This is simply visualizing the energy. Now this might seem like it's lacking because it doesn't have that motion or it doesn't have the addition of witchy magical supplies but it doesn't have to be. The key aspect of any spell crafting is your intent and so when you are setting into that ritual space when you are creating that circle by visualizing the energy you're putting into it that is absolutely perfectly magical and a wonderful way to cast a circle. So in this instance you might visualize perhaps a beam of light encircling you and creating that beautiful circle space. Again you can visualize it moving in a clockwise direction and then to release it in a counterclockwise direction or perhaps because you are working with visual energy you might be lifting up a circle all at once from the earth. You can also visualize different sorts of circles. So it doesn't always have to be a circle of light. It could be a circle of trees or a circle of stones. Stone circles as we know are very very magical, very very powerful. Consider what sort of energy is speaking to you when you are visualizing that circle and what energy you want to lend that ritual and spell crafting space and that will give you sort of a feel for what's going to be the best visual energy for your circle crafting. So those are my tips on what circle casting is in witchery and three ways you can approach it. I'd love to hear do you cast circles in your practice? If so how do you approach it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more please do hit the subscribe button and if you would like to join me for monthly witchy lessons for extra magical and witchy exclusive content then pop down to the patreon link below and of course you can always book a reading with me through Etsy or check out the magical info cards deck I offer. Thank you so very much for joining me in this magical witchy discussion of circle casting and until next time, so very many blessings.